Welcome, Happy New Year. We are so glad you can join us this morning as we worship our God Almighty together. Today we celebrate the baptism of the Lord and we also remember our own baptism. We give thanks to God for the water and the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. Let us rejoice and worship God, our Savior. Amen. Good morning and welcome to worship this winter Sunday morning. Happy New Year to you all worshiping at home this morning. I have, my name is Hattie Kaur. I'm the director of youth ministries here and I have my three month old daughter Greta here with us this morning. And while we're celebrating the baptism of the Lord in worship together, we wish we could be baptizing Greta, but we look forward to the day when we get to baptize her into our church family when we're all here together. I have a few announcements to share with you this morning. We're resuming as much as we can in the life of the church together this week. Our confirmation class met last week. Our Sunday school classes are meeting at 11 this morning on Zoom, along with Pastor Serna's fellowship hour. And the links are in the emails that you received from the church office on Friday. Um, we'll also be resuming our youth groups this week, tonight and Wednesday night. Our preschool children will be back in the building with their teachers safely tomorrow. Um, and Pastor Serna's Wednesday prayer group will resume on the 20th in a week and a half. Uh, be sure to join us next week on Sunday the 17th for in worship for our seventh anniversary of being a reconciling congregation with our special guest preacher, the Reverend Rich Havard from the Inclusive Collective Campus Ministry in Chicago. Thank you for joining us this morning, and I invite you now to join me in a spirit of worship. Please join me for the call of worship of Psalms 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over waters. The glory of God thunders the world over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The, Lord, the voice of the Lord breaks cedars the Lord breaks cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and the Syrian like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And all his temples say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as a king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Let us all worship the Lord. Our opening hymn is number 604, Praise and Thanksgiving Be to God. Please join us.
Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we come before your presence this morning filled with so much joy and gratitude for who you are in our lives and for all the wonderful things that you continue to shower upon us. Bless our worship service, speak to us, and bless your people who are worshiping with us right now. Forgive us from our sins. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The, the New Testament lesson is from books, from the book of Acts 19, 1 through 7. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. While Apollos was, while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Asbestos, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into, into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling them, telling the people to believe in one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. When Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came, came upon them and spoke with the tongues and, prophet, and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The Gospel lesson is from Mark 1, uh, 4 to 11. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people of the whole Judean countryside and the people of Jerusalem, Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and leather belt around his waist. As he ate locusts and wild honey, he proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And the voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks to be God. Turn. 
For is this John the Baptist who had the privilege to baptize Jesus? He was a wilderness preacher. John preached about a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John asked the people to repent, turn their lives over to God, and be baptized. John had a unique dress code. Some might say he needed a complete makeover. He wore clothes made of camel's hair and a belt made of leather. His diet was also unique. He ate locusts and wild honey. John admitted that he was not worthy to untie Jesus' sandals, but nevertheless, he was called to prepare the way for Jesus' arrival. In keeping with John's wild personality, he was a bold preacher and influential leader. We know this because people from Jerusalem traveled to the wilderness to hear him, and they kept on coming to him. The people were so attracted by the good news, they were willing to be baptized and submit their lives to God. John's rough country preaching was so appealing to people that they left their city lives to listen to him in the wilderness. People believed his message and he baptized the believers in the Jordan River. John told the people that Jesus would be more powerful and mightier than he was and that Jesus would baptize them with the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not sin and had no call to repent, yet he chose to be baptized by John. Jesus subjected himself to John's baptism to show us his humanity and to practice what he preached. Thus, Jesus submitted himself for a human baptism officiated by John at the Jordan River. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. While all these things were going on, God's Spirit descended on him and the heavens opened and God said, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This was an affirmation that Jesus was truly the Son of God. Jesus was human like we are who received power from God. Our Lord was baptized simultaneously with water and the Holy Spirit. Those of us who are baptized are also baptized with water and the Spirit. Through baptism, we received God's grace and we are identified as sons and daughters of God the Almighty. As we celebrate the baptism of our Lord today, we too remember our baptism and give thanks. Why did Jesus get baptized? It is because he was human like we are. As he walked the earth in human form, one way he showed his humanity was by being baptized. The kingdom of God is connected to the world at the transforming event of baptism. In a sense, God baptized the world with Christ. When we repeat this ancient event, then we connect to the kingdom of God. The coming of Christ and the process of baptism is a continuing event one in which we are saying, God is here. God is with us and making us know him through the water. Jesus' entrance into the world more than 2,000 years ago is the same as our baptism today. As Christians, we have been touched by God. Christ arrived and touched the world and all of us through the Spirit so that each of us might be transformed to live a brand new life. Christ was sub subjected to the worst part of our world so that we might be saved. So the way is paved. Christ came for us. John the Baptist represents preparation for Christ. He reminds us that we need to be prepared. And how do we prepare? We prepare by following Christ faithfully. 
Every time I baptize a child or an adult with water, I then anoint the person with oil saying, the Holy Spirit work within you, the being born through water and the Holy Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Through baptism, God's power is at work, and the ritual is a beautiful reminder of that for those being baptized and the whole congregation. The sacrament of baptism is following Christ's command recorded in Matthew 29:18. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is present in and through the water. Baptism is the washing away of sin. Baptism is dying and being raised in Christ. Baptism is a Christian initiation. The person being baptized is brought into the community of faith and fellowship of the church and its mission. Through baptism, both the person being baptized and the congregation are making a commitment to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. In the United Methodist Church, we practice infant baptism. Although the infant child is not capable of knowing the meaning of baptism, we believe that the grace of God is given to all, including that child being baptized. God's grace is sufficient for that child and God will take that child into his arms. The Reverend John Wesley, founder of the Methodist movement in 18th century England, supported infant baptism. That is why the roles of the Christian parents, sponsors, or godparents and congregation are very important in nurturing the baptized child in the, in the Christian faith. During the baptismal ceremony, we ask, will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves to profess their faith openly and to lead the Christian life. The person being baptized receives that means of grace. When an infant or adult is baptized, the process of rebirth begins. All Christians are ministers. God's work is not only for the pastors to do, but all of us are given gifts for service, witness, and ministry in the local church and outside the four walls of this building. Whatever our call, in life Jesus wants us to be faithful and live out our baptism. I was baptized as an infant in the Roman Catholic Church. My mother told me I was wearing a white dress. Unfortunately, the pictures from my baptism day were ruined during a devastating 1972 flood in our town in the Philippines. My parents invited a beautiful young woman to be my sponsor or godmother. My parents slaughtered a dozen of their chickens and a few goats to serve the guests as they celebrated my baptism. How about you? Do you remember your own baptism? Probably not. If you were baptized as an infant, you may not recall the event unless your parents or godparents told you about it. Let us take a moment of silence to reflect on our own baptism. Our baptism claims us as God's beloved. We are God's own children and we are loved. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul writes, If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. The old 2020 has gone and the new year is here. 
Jesus accepted his mission from God. How about us? Will we faithfully follow the Emmanuel, whatever may be the cost? In 2021, may we aim to truly live as baptized children of God. We are called to testify to the world that we are God's beloved. In doing so, we can help others experience this same Lord in their lives. We also are summoned to practice our baptism by living our lives in God's way. In 2020, although it was a difficult year, we lived our baptism here at First UMCLG and beyond the four walls of our church in many ways. With God's grace, we tried to follow God faithfully through our giving to the church and through our witness and service. The staff and I, deeply moved by your generosity and faithfulness to God's work through your continued support of our church with your service, witness, and resources. Thank you, church. Nancy Hartwig, a person I know from my former church appointments, sent me a nice email with this message, quote, It's not what you gather, but what you scatter that tells what kind of life you have lived, unquote. Mother Teresa once said, quote, We are not called to be successful, we are called to be faithful, unquote. At my previous church appointment, the chair of the Stop Paris Relations Committee sent me this text message, quote, The meeting last night shows we can accomplish a lot, unquote. Yes, through God's help, together we can do great things for the glory of God if we remain loyal to what we are called to do. As we begin the new year, we renew our covenant with God. May we keep the vows we have made to become instruments of God's peace, compassion, and love. The Holy Spirit is upon us and it will empower us to live as faithful disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist summoned the people to live anew. We are called to not only to look at ourselves and our relationship with Christ, neighbors, and creation, but to point others toward Jesus. Our appropriate response to God's grace, love, and forgiveness is to live a new life and proclaim the good news. As we start the new year, we are given an opportunity to reflect on God's power at work in us. We are invited to believe the good news, to be led in God's truth, and prepare ourselves for God's baptism of the Holy Spirit. To repent means to rely fully upon God. Will you listen to God more during this 2021 and follow God in leading your life? Will you let the heavens open so that God can enter your life? Today we remember our baptism and we rejoice. We give thanks to God for the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give thanks to God for the gift of the water. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, when the Spirit descended on Jesus at his baptism in Jordan water, you revealed him as your own beloved son. You anointed him with the Holy Spirit.
Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, now and forever. Amen. Our prayer hymn is number 605, Wash, O God, Our Sons and Daughters. pray. Loving God, through our baptism, you claim us as your beloved. We thank you for the assurance that we are your children and we are loved. Your power is at work through us and your grace is sufficient for us all. We are all ministers given gifts for service, witness, and ministry near and far, and we ask that you will enable us to do your works here on earth. Jesus accepted his mission from you, their God, and in this new year, may we aim to truly live as baptized children of yours who are called to testify to the world that we are your beloved. Empower us to help others experience the same Lord in their lives. Summon us to practice our baptism by living our lives in your way. Enable us to live out our baptism here, not only inside of the four walls of our church, but beyond. Yes, through your help, O oh God, together we can do great things for your own glory if we remain loyal to what we are called to do. As we begin the new year, we renew our covenant with you, dear Lord. May we keep the vows we have made to become instruments of your peace, compassion, and love. May your spirit be upon us and empower us to live as faithful disciples of yours and help us, God, to truly be your beloved children in this world that needs help. God, give us your grace and help us to reflect your power at work in our lives in all the things that we do and say. Thank you for inviting us to believe the good news, to be led by your truth, and prepare ourselves for the baptism of your Holy Spirit. Help us to listen to you more and follow your leading in our lives. Be with those who are struggling in life. Grant healing for those who are sick 
and grant your comfort upon those who are grieving. Be with those who are feeling alone and lonely. I pray for peace for our nation and for the whole world. Bless our homes, all the faith communities, our towns, our nation, with your grace, mercy, and protection. We pray all these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's time for invitation to offerings. As we celebrate and remember our baptism this morning, we give thanks for God's faithful, faithfulness in our lives. God is so good to us, and our appropriate response to God's love and grace is to give ourselves for Jesus' ministry here on earth. Through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our services, and our witness, may God be glorified in us through our financial gifts. Let's give generously, and thank you so much for your offering today. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 2089 in The Faith We Sing, Wild and Lone, The Prophet's Voice.
Now receive the benediction. May the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen.